What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbit's Used Cars. You know, we talk about pretty trucks. We talk about first gen C10, second gen C10s, square bodies, OBSs, big lifted Jeeps, big old mall crawler trucks. I've got a secret obsession. And I know by the looks of me, you wouldn't believe it, but I love work trucks. One, I've made a small fortune off work trucks in my life selling them, but I don't know. I don't know if it's just a country boy in me or what, but there's just something about just a good old work truck. I, I, I get excited about a plain Jane truck that makes money. I just, I don't know. I just like it. And how all this got started, and funny how it all works out. So I feel like I'm doing the right thing. Because when you're doing the right thing, it's funny, just things fall together. My buddy John's got his little 70 C10 here, Texas long bed. Patina it out, done up like an old service station truck. You know, Kobe said, John's bringing his truck by us. Man, you know, he's going to do some lettering for us. He does some wild pin stripe lettering, and he's just, he's the guy. And I said, that's all we're going to bring it by, be fun to shoot with. I'm thinking, how, what can I tie in with this? I had a guy come by. And we got to talk and brought his son by. He was driving just this beat up old red OBS Chevrolet truck. Beat to death. Long bed, four by eight sheet of plywood laying in the back. You know, just stickers all over it, dead red paint, steel wheels, no center caps, just a good old work truck, tour seat cover and all. He said, man, I love this old truck. It ain't worth nothing, but I like it. And he over here, he looked at my new Silverado set out there. He goes, no, that thing's pretty. And I said, yeah, but that thing don't make any money. That costs you money. This one right here, this old girl right here, you won't be scared to pick up a load of mulch in. I'm the guy over here picking the rocks out of my tires. I'm that guy. It costs a lot of money to look you pick up teenage girls at the mall. And that got me thinking about it. And we got talking about OBS trucks and a fun story just spurred in my brain memory so this was 2000 2001 it's so working at carmax my dad was running the truck shop my grandfather who i was extremely close to he was just me and my grandpa were really tight everybody even says we even look alike and even act a lot alike hear my dad tell it and i don't see nothing wrong with it you know my grandfather had recently passed away you know, dad's running the truck shop. He's a little down in the dumps. You know, you got to think about it. You, know, you got that one family member that's the glue that holds that family together. And then when that person's gone, just phew, everything, everybody goes their own ways. I mean, you got to think about it. We're here at the holidays. You know, I remember big Christmases and big Thanksgivings and, you know, going over to my grandparents' house. You know, everybody come and see Pop, my grandfather. All the good food and nieces and nephews and cousins and aunts and uncles and, you know, everybody. And so many, so many funny stories that I could pull from that, but we're not even talking about that, but, including one time my dad punched my uncle in the nose, but that's a story for another time. Back to work trucks. Like I said, my grandfather recently passed away and, you know, my grandfather was, he was at the shop every day of his life. Like I said, he started that company in 1968 with a $300 loan on a 65 Ford Mustang. You know, that was his heart, was that truck shop. He loved that place. He loved hot rods and that shop. That, that, was, his, that was his thing. And Saturday Night Wrestling, loved it. I have watched so much bad wrestling with that man in my life. And I'm talking about the heyday. No Sheik and Holster and Macho Man Randy Savage, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. You know, and, and just the little memories from that. But we got talking about OBS trucks. And like I said, my grandfather passed away. My dad was kind of down in the dumps. And they picked up a contract job where they needed a service truck. You know, we had a little runner that ran got parts and stuff. But they needed like a truck with like a work bed on it. Well, my dad didn't want to put a whole lot of money into it because he didn't know how long this deal was going to last or whatever. So I was working at CarMax. My dad calls me up and he goes, hey. Looking for a little service truck. Preferably something with a work bed on the back. Well, you know, a few weeks goes by, and I always pulled the wholesale inventory report at CarMax. Basically, the wholesale inventory report is 
Well, they pull report. They have inventory reports for every car on the yard, but the wholesale inventory report was all the cars that were traded in that are not quite to CarMax standards. High mileage, salvage titles, paint work, painfully obvious paint work. Back then, they wouldn't even sell a diesel truck, so they put all the diesels in wholesale. They wouldn't even sell a diesel car. They wouldn't sell anything diesel at CarMax then. And uh, so that all went to wholesale. So, I mean, you'd be surprised. And every once in a while, you know, you, you, you could pick a good deal out of wholesale. And, you know, the big thing was you could only buy one a year. One employee could buy one car a year out of wholesale. So what I did was I would just sweet talk the ladies in the business office and they would buy mine for me. So anyway, I pulled a wholesale report. 92 Chevrolet WT. Well, I hopped on a golf cart and rode up to the back lot. And there it sat in all its refrigerator white glory. A 92 Chevrolet, half ton, long bed, with a toolbox work bed on the back. Fairly clean. You can tell it's been repainted recently, the whole truck. It had some tape marks on the weather strips. So, I mean, it was obvious it's been painted, but the you know, old truck was a 10 footer. You know, bright white, open the door, got old pawpaw seat cover, tore, of course. Of course, the pull seat cover back and the seat looked like a wild bear cat been trapped in it for a year. Rubber mat, automatic, no air, 4.3 V6. I mean, this thing was plain Jane as they got. Apparently, it was a truck for Home Depot. They came out and like, you know, I guess did work at the different stores or whatever. I've never seen them rent them out before or anything like that. So I'm assuming, you know, light fixtures or maintenance or something. I saw this stuck sticker in the door. And, you know, of course, they had a Carfax report pulled on it and pulled. And sure enough, it was owned by Home Depot, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it was sold to some individual and this guy drove it. And so I pulled up the rest of the report. The mileage stopped at 150,000, and it was TMU after that. The odometer didn't work in it. Unlocked the lock box, fired it up. Boom, just fired right up. Had a CD player in it, good tunes. No air. $1,700. I mean, I think about it. The damn work bed off the back's worth $1,700. Had all the keys to the, lot, to the boxes on the back. And like I said, the truck was decent. We'll take a shot. Found you a truck. Pulled it down to the front lot. And actually, I never even drove it. Matter of fact, uh, my dad and one of the guys came over from the shop. Help, I didn't left with it. Stuck tile in the glove box. They brought it in. They said, the old truck ain't half bad. It said, it runs good and all that. Well, they used it. You know, well, by this time, you know, a year or so goes by, I already left CarMax and Fell for the sucker trap of working for a family business. So I'm working at the truck shop and it's still there going back and forth. Back and forth to Simpsonville. This truck travels 30 minutes one way every day. Back and forth, service and trailer yards. Well, that job does so good. Next thing you know, they sign us up for another contract job in Gaffney, South Carolina. Well, that's about an hour up the road. So now this truck is going 30 minutes a day one way. So an hour round trip going to these drop yards. Now we've got this other drop yard to go to. So now they go there. So now it's going, I mean, this truck's staying moving pretty much all day long. We got a guy that his job is just driving this truck. You know, something, I don't know how every shop is. I know how my shop is. I would never buy a car that my guys have had. They don't get service like they should. You know, they just kind of like keep it going, you know. And uh, I mean, the oil's probably been changed in this truck in the four years we owned it was probably changed twice. And the only thing I can ever remember giving problems, we never put brakes on it. We put a set of tires on it. I remember that, we put a set of tires on it. I drove it one time, I was helping a friend move. And I'll never forget, I pulled back to the shop with it and shut the door. And as soon as I got out, the radiator was just pissing water out. So $79 radiator, but that's all we ever did to it. You know, didn't really use oil. God knows how many miles were on it. You know, showing 150,000 two years ago, two years prior for us buying it, rather. This thing's like clockwork. Just a great little truck. Well, these contract jobs are getting bigger and bigger. We need more stuff. And this truck, and like I said, a little half ton. She's light duty as they come. And we load that thing down, tools, all this stuff, doing trailer work, putting floors in trailers, thresholds in trailers, landing gears, 
Matter of fact, we even had a mobile welding rig in the back of this thing at one time, and we just needed more truck. So we went out and replaced this little half-ton truck with a one-ton truck that is virtually doing the same job as a little half-ton truck's doing. We'll give that little half-ton truck a break. So we got us a nice new one-ton. We had a customer that did guardrail work, and I don't know if any of you guys ever know anybody or ever did it yourself did guardrail work, but that's that's an interesting profession. You know, a lot of work release and working on side road in general, pavement marking, things of that nature. That's not easy work. So generally, a lot of people don't want to do it. Um, so the guys that do do it generally don't have no choice. You know, it's either stay locked up in your cell or get to do that. Keep in mind, these characters are not usually the best with equipment. We had a company that we worked on their trucks. It was this guardrail company, and you know they're always looking for pickups and looking for something because they literally were like the death of vehicles. Like they went there and they died. Sold a truck to the guardrail company, and they put their number one guy driving it. His name's Smiley. Don't even have to describe it. From the name, you can paint the picture. Smiley drove it. He loved it. You know, never really had any problems with it. And, you know, keep in mind, in the meantime, a lot of these guys didn't have driver's license. So they got the broad idea, instead of buying Suburbans and all that, they would buy really clean grandma station wagons to haul these crews out to these different guardrail jobs all over the southeast. And this little white Chevrolet truck chased them all around everywhere with it. Hauling nuts, bolts, I mean, just loaded down. They gave them a station wagon. If you've ever seen a post-hole driving truck, and basically... It's uh, probably like a 5500 Chevrolet, like 650 Ford, but it's got this big body on the back of it. And what it does is it's got a, a body that articulates turns and rotates around. And it's like a big counterweight and it's hydraulic. And this thing drives posts into the ground. It's a pretty impressive machine. You definitely don't want to stick your finger in it. So the guys were back at the hotel with a post hole driving truck, this Chevrolet, in one of the station wagons. And they got to drinking and they said, I wonder if that thing would send a post through the hood of a car. Thank God they didn't pull a Chevrolet truck around. They pulled this Chevrolet square woody station wagon that was damn near immaculate when they got it. No miles, brand new. I mean, just a good looking car. And they pulled it. And when that post went through, it caved the corner of the hood. That was the weirdest damage to a vehicle you ever seen because you got to think about it, it's going straight down. And when the post went down, it busted all the front end, pushed the hood down, pushed the bumper down, destroyed this damn car. Hell, it bit the damn frame horn down on the end of it. And these jackasses drove it back from wherever they were. And, you know, the boss man chewed ass, they junked, junked the wagon. A few more years goes by and we'll see the heavy shave from time to time, you know, and they come pulling up with it, Smiley's still driving it. I mean, you seen it one time with spinning hub caps on it. I shit you not. The passenger door, he was talking about his door is hard to shut. And, you know, typical OBS Chevrolet truck. They eat hinge pins and bushings in the door hinges. Just part of it. Instead of stopping and putting a set of pins and bushings in the door, they just keep slamming the door. Well, when you keep slamming the door, next thing you know, the latch and the striker you know, riding up on it, bends the striker up or breaks it loose in the door, breaks the latch in the door. Well, this already happened. They couldn't keep the door shut on that Chevrolet, so the fix for it, we welded the door shut. So now it was a one-door Chevrolet truck was still going. After they had that truck for a few years, the Gordo company sold out. Truck still going. And they gave it to Smiley. It's his personal vehicle. And that's where the last I heard of the truck. So I was talking to my buddy that came by the shop with the red OBS, talking about work trucks. And he's like, man, you just can't kill them old Chevy. They got me thinking about it. So I got talking to the guys in the shop. I said, I wonder whatever happened to old Smiley. They said, he's still around. He's still around. They said, yes, he's doing landscaping work now and still driving that Chevrolet truck to this day, pulling a landscape trailer behind it. You know, I love pretty trucks and fancy trucks. There's just something to say. That old 4.3 V6 sitting in the wholesale lot of CarMax. The things it's seen, the felons that have rode in it.
you know, you got to think, that truck's got heart. Like, you know, we've had some of the prettiest trucks in the Southeast in this building. I've owned some of them, some of them are friends' trucks or whatnot, but we've had some gorgeous trucks. But damn it, you got to say something about that. These trucks that have been handled with kit gloves and, you know, it don't get rained on or it didn't get this. This truck was tortured from day one and still going. That's heart. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. Oh. And so that's cool. And didn't do the best job of masking everything off. You know, had a lot of paint lines on it. Like my GTO. He fires that son of a bitch up and it sounds like hell. All right. And I drove it, go figure, when I was moving, I'd heard actually. 1830. Love it. Oh.